Hello, families of fifth grade instrumental music students. Um, I am Mr. Mayer, and I'm going to take you through um, some information um, as we get uh, moving on the second, third, and fourth quarters for this year. Um, I apologize for what seems like a slow start to the year for instrumental music. Um, in a normal year, we would have jumped right in. Um, obviously, this is anything but a normal year. Um, and I would like to take a few minutes to tell you how I got to where we are now with the instrumental music program and um, what that means for your students going forward um, for the rest of the school year. So we, um, or myself, when I say we, I usually mean the school, um, we were having an issue with students um, facing a little bit of burnout uh, around 12 weeks, and then we were having some issues with uh, conversion of students from sixth grade band and orchestra into seventh grade band and orchestra when they switched buildings. Um, so here's some background. Uh, two years ago, I was examining our program and I was trying to find a way that our students could be better equipped to make an instrumental selection that would support uh, their success and enjoyment of band and orchestra. Um, previous to this last school year, um, students were usually coming in for an evening, maybe about two hours to try out instruments. They had, we had an instrument of each on a bunch of different tables in the library and some volunteers to help them uh, try to make sound on each. And the result was that each student only had about five or 10 minutes of contact time uh, per instrument. And at Mills Lawn, we have a uh, band and orchestra or each class of instrumental music kind of written in as one of their rotation of specials opposite of art and PE and library and um, oh, counseling. Um, so each student gets the opportunity to participate in instrumental music, which is rare for just about any school that I've ever heard of. Um, and I think it's a great uh, uh, thing that Mills Lawn has put their uh, weight behind in that it's an important thing for them to at least have the experience of. So as I mentioned, it was a, uh, we had a, a burnout time and a lot of this was based on students would pick an instrument either that they thought they might be interested in or they were kind of directed towards an instrument because uh, a family might have owned one previously from an older sibling or it was uh, the instrument that an aunt or uncle or grandparent had to loan down to the student. Um, and then sometimes um, parents direct their students towards a particular instrument because maybe they have played it in uh, high school or college and they, and they uh, would like to help their students um, at home. Often I found that students don't always want to necessarily have their parent be their tutor when it comes to playing a musical instrument. And, and um, for sure, there is a little bit of um, the instrument matching the student in general. I myself started on trumpet, um, but after two years switched to French horn and it was the right move for me. Um, in subsequent years, I ended up learning all of the band instruments before I graduated high school, but that was my particular area of interest. So um, what I am doing here is that um, I'm looking for a way to with more than five or 10 minutes of contact time to give students a chance to make a decision for themselves that is informed by experience and is in line with what their interest is. So um, I made a plan and on the next slide, I'll talk about that. Um, I started looking through our inventory and we have a, a vast amount of instruments that have been donated over the years by former students or community members who pull them out of closets. And we had a, a fair number of instruments sitting around not being used year after year. Um, so as I said, I wanted to give the students more voice and choice in selecting their instrument and also give them some experience on several instruments in order to make an informed decision. So I want them to spend more time than five or 10 minutes to figure out whether or not that instrument's really right for them. Um, in particular, people might think that they want to play a string instrument, but don't realize at first as a fifth grader how difficult it can be. Um, also with flute, it, uh, it often ends up being that um, they like the sound of the flute, they think it's uh, the interesting instrument for them, but it's really difficult for some people to get that sound across the tone hole in the flute. Um, so those are the, the areas where I was having the most difficulty with students getting frustrated and therefore not wanting to stick with it. Um, 
So based on the instruments that we already owned at the school, I, uh, I did some calculating and figured out that I needed to write a grant um, to get enough instruments to have a class set. And my uh, thought process behind here was having uh, an instrument right away for everybody in fifth grade. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, so uh, I wrote a grant so that we could fill out the number of instruments I would need for what would be the maximum of three classes uh, of fifth graders at about 24 each. Um, so I also ordered a new set of cases and new bows for all the string instruments just to kind of get everybody on the same page. Uh, having matched cases uh, really gives a psychological boost to um, students if they're, uh, so they're not the one that's in the old ratty case. Uh, it really, it really does help visually. Um, and I start students on a limited number of instruments to choose from in the early uh, years. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, it's, it's really, really helpful if, student is, if a student is in a larger peer group of like instruments. So if there's 12 trumpets and 12 trombones in a class, uh, it's very helpful compared to having one or two French horns or one or two tuba players um, who are kind of struggling it out on their own. So there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer modeling that can happen in that situation. And for the most part, um, the instruments that I start them on are the smaller ones that are easier to carry. And uh, when you go to purchase them, they're also usually the le least expensive or less expensive. Um, and they're also the ones that fit in fifth grade hands better. Um, you know, I for sure have had some fifth graders who could have played tuba, but it's a big, heavy thing to carry around. And it also takes a, a, a big statured student. Uh, and I don't want to discourage anyone from playing that later when they're getting closer to adult size um, by struggling with it as a fifth grader. So. This year and, and last year, um, the, the kids are coming to me um, with their already organized homeroom groupings. Um, and this has helped with organizing specials and uh, getting the students to move together better. Um, and in, within my own class, uh, on a normal year, I would ro uh, rotate them every 12 weeks, kind of a trimester system, and have them come to me. Um, or when they come to me, they will uh, say if it's Barclays homeroom, they might start on strings and then rotate to brass and then rotate to woodwinds. And then uh, Miss Lowe's class would start on brass, woodwinds, and then strings. And if we have a third section, they would start on the, the last one and rotate equally. Um, after, uh, for this year, we're gonna do nine week quarters um, because of uh, trying to figure out social distancing and, and um, Virtual learning, uh, we, we got a bit of a back or a behind the eight ball start here. Um, so after each rotation, I have the students fill out um, a reflection form um, so that they can um, give themselves a reminder uh, part of the year later, how they did on each instrument. And then uh, as a discussion between them and, and myself and you guys, the parents and caregivers, uh, we make a decision um, about what instrument they're gonna focus on for sixth grade um, based on their interests, their ability, and the needs of the band as a whole. Um, so we try to balance the, the band out so that there's not too many of each instrument and so that we have a band that can function once they get into middle school. So, um, sorry about that timer on my phone. Um, the couple of the key points of the new program is that uh, your family will save some money up front. Um, it's typically about $270 to $350 a year to rent an instrument. Uh, we work closely with Kincaid's Is Music from Springfield. They have been a uh, very uh, helpful dealer over the last uh, eight years that I've been around. Um, and then because we're pro providing um, school-owned instruments to everyone in fifth grade, we will be asking for a $40 maintenance and repair fee with an $11 book fee and uh, for a total of $55. And you can um, write checks to YS Schools, and that's payable to Nancy and uh, Bussy in the Mills on office. Um, each student will learn the basics of reading music three times through. Um, because they're changing instruments and they're kind of reviewing how to read music. And last year's group certainly were better readers for that. You get some built-in remediation on how to read the notation. Uh, students will learn three instruments uh, for nine weeks each. 
Um, this will give the student extended experience on uh, one of each family of instruments, and this will help them make an informed decision about which instrument's right for them uh, when selecting their focus instrument for sixth grade. So again, the goal is to get students excited about the instrument they want to focus on um, for the long term to become proficient at that instrument. And if a student was to play, uh, say, flute, trumpet, and violin through fifth grade, I am absolutely okay with them picking, you know, cello, viola, uh, clarinet, or trombone out of that first uh, rotation of seven instruments. A lot of the skills on each family of instrument are transferable, and I have no problem if, like, a student played flute in fifth grade, having them have their focus instrument be clarinet for sixth grade. And some things to consider. Um, since our supply of instruments, um, a lot of them went towards this new program. We are going to uh, ask or encourage that any family who is able um, plan on renting or purchasing an instrument um, for sixth grade and beyond, um, with the exception of like French horn and tuba and bassoon, which are prohibitively expensive for a lot of families to buy. We ha do have a number of those that we own um, at the school. So once they're in middle school, if they choose that path or the percussion path, um, we have instruments available for them to use. Again, it'll be a $40 maintenance fee for the year. Um, we, like I said, we, have a, uh, we will plan on having a rental meeting sometime in late May um, so that Kincaid's can explain their rental program. Um, it is one of the better rental programs in the Miami Valley area, and um, I will leave it to them to uh, give you the particulars on that when they do have the meeting. They also have a great trade-in or a trade-up program in their rental Program. If your student decides to stick with band and orchestra throughout uh, middle and high school, um, you do not have to finish purchasing that um, student instrument. You, your rental credit can go towards the purchase of a intermediate or professional level instrument. Finally, um, how we're going to get instruments out to students. Um, I will be making requests during their class for them to request uh, which instrument they'd like to try for this quarter. Um, with Ms. Barclay's class doing strings and Ms. Lowe's class starting with brass, trumpet, and trombone. Um, once the students have their selections made uh, by tomorrow, uh, Friday, there will um, I'll assign an instrument from the school to them, and we will have an instrument pick up this Saturday, um, November seventh, from three to seven at Yellow Springs High School, which is on the east side or the west side of town on East Enon Road, four twenty East Enon Road. Um, It'll be around the back of the part of the building that looks like a flying saucer landed and got connected to the building. That is the music room at the high school, middle school, and uh, you'll park kind of on the soccer field side and look for the single black door. Um, and I will have a poster up that lets you know which door to come in. Um, again, I'll be there from three to seven. Um, I am available most afternoons and I live in town. So uh, the students who are playing string instruments, I am more than happy to make house calls and get their instruments tuned up uh, at a somewhat regular basis. Um, just email communication about that is very helpful so that we can schedule a time. And uh, our format for class, I will be having the students view YouTube training videos that I've recorded over the last eight months um, for each lesson in the book. And then after they've practiced that at home a bit um, with my lesson videos, they will record uh, themselves trying to play them into a flip grid for me to review and then to give them feedback with. Um, and in between rotations, I have a plan to sanitize the instruments um, that I've learned from my time as a musical instrument repair technician um, so that they're um, sanitary and safe for the next user. Um, please fill out the link here at the bottom. Um, for any clarifying questions you have, I will get back to those as soon as possible. And throughout the year, you can always contact me at bmayor at yschools.org for any other questions. All right, thank you so much, and I look forward to working with your students.